What's up everyone, my name is Steve Larson and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. Hey, you guys, I'm actually super excited for this. This so for, I can't believe I'm, I'm recording the first episode of this podcast. I mean, this is awesome. I, I love podcasts. I think they're awesome. I've learned a lot from them. Um, I've made money because of things I learned off podcasts. Um, I've, I've, I've gained a lot of respect for a lot of people. Anyway, so I'm excited to be doing this podcast. And I remember the idea first came up and I was like, I don't want to get podcasting. I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to go out and start. I don't know, going around and and trying to interview all these people and stuff like that. And um, what I want you to know is what you can expect from this, though, because I'm excited that I de- I decided to. So I used to um, I used to do a lot more periscoping than than I used to. But I I got 600 periscope followers, and something interesting happened when I started publishing. Um, the moment I started publishing. I started getting a ton of interaction with people, way more than my ad spend, right? And it's super fun. And it was just so. I gotta tell you, it's as much for me to be doing this podcast as it might be for the things that you learn in this. Um, selfishly, I just enjoy it. It's super fun. I, I feel a, a connection whenever I do that, and then I get feedback from people, and they say, "Hey, I used that tactic, and I made money with it." And it blows me away. Super fun. Uh, so, anyways, I, I enjoy that a lot. But what you can expect from this podcast is to learn specific sales funnel strategies, um, whether that's for webinars, tripwire funnels, um, launch, you know, uh, product launch funnels, uh, automated webinar funnels. Anyways, if if those don't mean anything to you, no worries. Like it's okay. I'm not gonna go. I'll go crazy deep on some things, but other things not. I, and I promise to keep it interesting as well. I hate monotone speaking podcasts. Oh my gosh, they're so boring. Those are the ones I always play at two times speed. If you didn't know you could do that, it's on your iPhone. Um, but you can play things at two times speed really fast. I kind of tend to talk quickly, so that might sound weird. But um, but what I'm gonna do is, t- is though talk about sales funnels, things I'm building right now for clients. Um, I've been building sales funnels for the last about four years. And I the first one I ever built was for this guy named uh, actually, I can't even remember his name, but he was an artist, and we were selling his art, um, and it was like, it wasn't like quite like GIF art, but it was, um, anyways, it was cool. It was cool stuff, and I remember I built the sales funnel. I was like, cool, you know, and and no one came to it. I was like, what the heck? So I was like, I gotta go learn how to send traffic, uh, but I didn't, you know. And and time went on, time went on, and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna go learn door to door sales just because I want to learn how to sell in really hard environments, and uh, so I, that's why I did it. And I went and I was like the number two sales guy for a while. I mean, I was like crushing it. It was awesome. I was selling pest control and uh, there were bugs everywhere, so it was great. And I remember while we were driving out to one of our areas one morning, I was looking and we were on the highway and it was a great day out. I remember the blue skies, you know, it's just fantastic out. Um, it's hot, crazy hot. But I remember looking around and seeing all these billboards as we were driving down the highway and thinking, this is crazy. I get up every morning and I convince people who are not planning on spending money that they should spend money, right? And I'm not doing bad at it, which is awesome. You know, that's a skill. But everyone who's seeing these billboards is planning on spending something when they call that number, right? It completely switches the psychology of the sale. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. I have. To, I was in college at the time and I was like, I have. I got to learn how to do that. And so what I did is I got on, uh, got online that night and I started putting out all these ads. All, just free classified ads all over the place selling our pest control. Hey, if you got this issue, call. If you got this issue, this issue, call. Hey, we're doing a sale call. And my phone started blowing up. I couldn't believe it. And uh, and my boss called. He's like, how are you getting all these sales? And I was like, they're calling me. And he goes, are you kidding me? What the heck? And I said, I, <laughs> I'm kind of shocked it's working. And I remember I, I, I pulled like 10 phone sales in a very short period of time. And, uh, and it's funny because you know, for a door-to-door salesman, um, there's different ratios, right? Hey, I know that if I pitch 50 to 60 people, one of them want, on average say yes. That's a crap ton of work and a lot of talking, right? But when I was doing this, it flipped it and I closed 90% of the people who were who were calling, always. I think there's only one or two who didn't. 
um, who didn't purchase, right? Because they called because they had a problem and they knew I had a solution. And so I was like, this is nuts. I, this whole thing is crazy. Why am I selling this way, right? It was a great way to learn how to sell and it's fantastic skill to have, right? And I've used that in many other places, but the interesting thing though, <laughs> I, I, was, I was hooked after that. My sales numbers started sucking because I started thinking like, how else can I blow this up? <laughs> and uh, I started thinking about, uh, anyways, I kind of quit door knocking and um, I went home that summer. We made, we made money and uh, it was a good experience, right? Um, so, but I came home and it, I, that just always stuck with me. I was like, that's nuts. People are clicking, right? It's not clicking, but that's where I'm going though. <laughs> Dang it, <laughs> they were calling. I was like, how can I get them to click on things that I want them to online? And so I started getting obsessed with this stuff. I was just like, okay, I gotta go make a product and then I'm gonna get ads and I'm gonna drive it to that product. You know, psh, wow, you know, revolutionary Steve. You know, that's, that's not that crazy. But what's nuts is that to me, that was a huge deal. Um, and so I went and I built this product and no one came and it never sold and no one came and it was tumbleweed after tumbleweed and I was like, crap. <laughs> That's when I was like, I need to learn how to send traffic. So I started going and I started learning all these traffic techniques and it was super cool. And at that time, I was, this is just the story of how I got into this so you guys know. And I thought it'd be good to tell this the first podcast. So um, at the time, I was in uh, my internet marketing, it was, it was called uh, Intro to Internet Marketing. It was my, one of my classes in college and it was bad, man. It was so bad. <laughs> I for the last couple of months, I had been studying traffic, right? Because none of my eBooks had sold. Um, it's still on Amazon, by the way. <laughs> and uh, um, anyway, so I started learning all these traffic techniques. And but by the time that internet marketing class came up in college, um, I had been studying enough stuff and practicing enough, and had made enough money that I knew everything he was already talking about and I knew that what the teacher was saying was old and was wrong and wasn't gonna work for what he was teaching and uh, so I, I told the teacher that <laughs> that's not always the wisest thing to do to a professor but that's what I did so um, I, I drew up this plan and it was hey I'm gonna have this squeeze page you know people come in they'll opt in and I'll get their email address and then after that I'm gonna ask them now I'm gonna push them over to the sales page of like someone else's product, right? I was practicing affiliate marketing. I would get a commission when I would send a buyer to someone um, and someone else would make the product, right? That's called affiliate marketing if you didn't, if you're not familiar with that. But what, uh, and it worked. My buddy, I, I put 50 bucks in um, to the, some ads. I woke up and there was 50 bucks in my account and I was like, Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And I went and I called my buddy. I was like, dude, get over here, it worked. And he comes flying over. I was like, we didn't really make anything, but we gained 17 subscribers and we broke even. So we got 17 people that we know are are basically buyers and one, you know, two or three of them specifically. And and now I can go market those people because we know that they want this stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And uh, I was like, we gotta figure out how to make like money with it though. <laughs> and. Uh, so anyways, we told that teacher, hey, we don't want to do this. We want to go. We, we don't want to come to your class anymore. And uh, I want to just go do this stuff. And he's like, okay. Uh, so we we got out of that class the rest of the semester. And uh, our deliverables was that we had to teach the rest of the class what we were doing at the end. And it's funny because it sounded like ninja stuff. Thinking back though, it it really wasn't that crazy. We were just doing what works. <laughs> um, well, what was nuts is that we got we ended up getting so good at sending just a crap ton of traffic. I mean, like 53,000 people in two days type of traffic. And we, we sent so much traffic to different places. It's crazy. Our professors and teachers started obviously noticing that because we would talk about it in classes before they'd start and we were just excited about it. And sometimes we go ask their advice. Well, there was a Paul Mitchell, you know, like the hair school that needed help with their, um, with their traffic. And they said, hey, we got two kids that are doing pretty good with it. So we started working with some of the owners of different Paul Mitchells around the nation. And uh, there was one in Idaho, no, there's two in Idaho, and then eight more, I can't remember, no, there's just one. There's just the one in Idaho and then eight more down through California. And we were on the phone with all these business owners they are making millions of dollars every year. And we're like telling them how to send traffic and stuff. And we're like, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. We're like, well, we don't wanna do it. We wanna hire you to do it. So we're like, okay. So they started paying us, you know, 
a thousand bucks here and there and we they'd give us an ad budget and we'd go send traffic to their different paul mitchell sites and um and like it, we were good at it though you know a normal ad word um was like fifty dollars on google and we were getting it for like five dollars or five cents even at these different places and uh it was it was i mean it was awesome people were loving it um Here's the thing, though, is that as we were driving all this traffic, um, and we started building some sites for some of their uprising celebrities and things like that, it was just, uh, that's a different story, though, but it's crazy cool. They started asking us this question. They're like, why, when the traffic comes, why isn't it actually doing anything? You know, they, they were like, ah, we're spending thousands of dollars in ads, but why isn't, the, why isn't it that we aren't actually getting more people. And we're like, oh, you know, the next ones are coming along. We're just, it's all about the numbers, you know, it's pretty standard stuff you hear in door to door sales. Just the numbers game, just complete bull crap, uh, in my opinion. Um, and, uh, but that, that question just never left me. And I was like, how the heck do you do that? And, uh, you know, we ended up moving on and I helped st- uh, start a cell phone insurance business uh, for iPhones called Fixed Insurance. It's still up. It's uh, F-I-X-D insurance, fixedinsurance.com. Um, but that was the first sales funnel that I ever built. And it was because of that question. What do I do with traffic when it hits my, my site? And how do I get it so that they buy stuff, right? And that's what a sales funnel is and answers. And that, anyway, so the very uh, classic sales funnel, here's the story too for that. Um, ads have gotten really expensive to send to just a flat website, right? If I'm buying ads and it's going to, uh, I don't know, like uh, webmd.com, just because everyone will probably know that site. If I'm buying ads to that site, it's very expensive because 90% of it is gonna leave without purchasing anything. I don't know if WebMD actually sells anything, (laughs) but uh, let's say they did. Um, 90% of that traffic is gonna leave without ever doing anything. And so it's very, very pricey for these people to send traffic. And so us internet marketers, we had to come up with a different way, right? We had to come up with a way to make it cheaper and to get back our ad costs while still getting a customer. And that's what a sales funnel does, right? You come in, you give them something that's uh, that's free or discounted that uh, a, a lot more people will take. And, and uh, you know, 20, 30% of people will purchase. Or, or opt into, right? Something free at the front end. Now you got their contact information, so then you can put them on different, you know, email campaigns and cell phone campaigns and follow-ups and direct mail campaigns or whatever it is. So you got their information and, and you know, over the long tail, as they purchase, um, you're gonna make back your money, right? That's just, that's if it's a one-page funnel. We're like, well, that's, that's all right. It's not amazing though. So what we did is us internet marketing industry, we started going and saying, hey, why don't we add a, a a product that's slightly higher priced to the next one. Less people will take it, but we'll make back more of our ad spend money, right? And so you got this free thing, and then one more thing that's, hey, like around, you know, 20 to 50 bucks, right? And then we do that again, but we hiked it a little, you know, another time. So now it's 97 to like $150. You know, that's the typical price range for the next one, you know, depending on what industry you're in. But um, anyways, the way it moves through though, like, so it's kind of cool. So my cost, like I have a, a site, called secretmlmhacks.com. I've built a ton of sales funnels in the last, especially the last year. I mean, probably close to 20 of them, custom. You know, it's not like I'm selling the same one over and over again. Um, But, uh, and I'll I'll tell you guys more about those as I go along. Just so you know, like the stories I'm telling here are from case studies and things I'm learning personally. Um, I will reference other people in this podcast and I will give them credit. Um, But I will also use just the things that I'm using that are working. Um, That way you guys know. So anyways, we started going and we started driving this traffic to these different sales funnels and you know, it, it started working. Like for secretemblemhacks.com, that's one that is mine. Um, it ca- it cost me like a dollar and 30 cents to get someone into the door, tech, you know, typically. And then my average cart value at the end, um, after it's all said and done across everything is like, is like $2.80, right? You can make a business off of that, McDonald's. McDonald's, McDonald's. <laughs> they spend about a dollar and eighty-one cents just to get you to their drive-through, right? That's their ad spend, on average per customer is a dollar and eighty-one cents. If they sell you a two-dollar and like eight cents hamburger, they've made twenty cents, right? You can't make a business off that. So, what is their quote-unquote upsell? Well, they ask you, would you like to biggie size that? Uh, you know, would you like fries and drink with that? Would you like, right? And now that they've done that, 
they've recouped their ad costs and their average cart value jumps up to like, I don't I guess like five, six, seven dollars. You can make a business with that now, right? Now they're making four or five dollars after their ad spend in every single um, thing they go. So anyways, that that's how it works though, um, right? So know what your, it's all about what your um, cost to acquire a customer and what's your average cart value. And if your average cart value is higher than your cost to acquire a customer, you have a business. And the ease, the simplest way to do it is to have a sales funnel, right? That helps you recoup your ad cost. You don't try and make money at first, just recoup your ad cost, and then you sell them the other things in the back end, right? Amateurs focus on the front end, the pros focus on the back end. Anyways, uh, that's maybe getting a little too technical for this, one, but that's how I got into it, is they're just me asking all these questions, like how do I do this? How do I do this? Why isn't this selling? Why isn't this selling? And then it suddenly clicked after like two years of trying in the internet space. So my purpose of this podcast is to cut down the time it takes for you to learn these things. And I'm just gonna tell you some sweet nuggets. I'll tell stories in every one of them usually just because I hate uh, I hate podcasts that don't have stories, right? Stories are amazing, stories engage us. I have to tell stories. So um, I'll tell lots of different stories um, that uh, in different scenarios and things that I'm working for right now. So um, I love sales funnels. I am a full-time builder and I use a tool called ClickFunnels. If you want a trial of that, go to salesfunnelbroker.com and click on resources and there's a trial for ClickFunnels there. Um, I used to build everything in WordPress and that was not a fun experience. <laughs> ClickFunnels is awesome because you can build literally anything and I'm not a coder or a programmer. I'm not a you know, I'm not a quote unquote tech guy. I might be now considered maybe more of a tech guy because I've, I've self-taught some code things, but I'm not, I would never consider myself a coder or a programmer, right? So I use ClickFunnels because I don't have to um, be a coder or programmer and I have complete say in what I build and do. It's not like you're getting a template. You can use the templates, but I always blank them out anyways and delete everything and just start over and build what I want. So <laughs> anyways, guys, thank you so much. I am super excited for this podcast. Um, this is actually a dream come true for me. It's as much for me as it is for the things you'll learn here. So anyways, um, please please subscribe and let me know what you think about this. If you think the idea is cool or if you think it's stupid, either, either or, I just wanna know. Feedback would be awesome. So um, please comment, um, rate this this podcast, subscribe. I would love to, to send out more of my stuff to you. Um, and my whole purpose is just to help you make money online or offline. Sales funnels work offline like McDonald's. But make more money using sales funnels, right? Um, because ads and competition have really increased, especially because of the internet. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Again, uh, please let me know what you think about this. Bye. Thanks for listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Have a question you want answered on the show? Get your free t-shirt when your question gets answered on the live Hey Steve show. Visit salesfunnelbroker.com now to submit your question.